Welcome to Moving Through Midlife. I am your host, Courtney, a personal trainer and movement specialist who wants to help you move through midlife with more grace. Each week, we will discuss ways we can show up better for ourselves and our children without the burnout. We will focus on overall health through habit stacking to help increase energy, provide movement snacks to help you move more throughout the day while also moving your body more, and learn from professionals on moving through midlife with ease so that you can feel confident with aging gracefully. Grab your earbuds and join me on a leisurely walk while we discuss moving through midlife. Today, I am speaking with Dr. Sheila McGinnis, who is a pediatric dermatologist and co-founder of Strike Club, a personal care brand for boys. She is here to speak with us about normalizing self-care for teen boys and discuss teen acne and how to help them care for their skin during this change in life. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi, Sheila. How are you today? I'm great, Courtney. Thank you so much for having me on. Yes, I'm excited to have you on. Can you tell us a little about yourself? Absolutely. I am a pediatric dermatologist, and I think maybe some of your audience might not even realize that pediatric dermatology is a subspecialty of dermatology. So um, we're board certified subspecialty of pediatric dermatology. We do a little extra training after dermatology residency to gain more expertise on how skin diseases and disorders show up in children you know, all the way from newborns to adolescents and young adults. Um, I have a busy academic practice in Minneapolis, um, and I'm mom to two tween boys myself and uh, um, like to think of myself as a little bit of an advocate for teens and tweens, especially boys. Um, And I'm co-founder of Strike Club, which is a personal care brand aimed at teens and teen boys. And why do you feel that you started really moving into teen boys? Was there a (laughs) personal reason or was there something you were noticing different with boys compared to girls in your office? Gosh, Courtney, all of the above. So, you know, as a mom of, of two boys and seeing so many adolescent boys in my practice, there, there was like a, a stark difference in the way that boys and girls show up for themselves in that space, which is really interesting. So the girls in my office, my teens, I love spending time with teens and tweens in my office. They would come in, maybe they had an issue. They wanted to talk about acne. They maybe wanted to go down a, you know, you know, a care-based prescription um, based care plan for their acne, but they would come in with like a list of 10 things they were doing or using or things they'd seen on TikTok. They'd talk about all these active ingredients like snail mucin and niacinamide and everything. And I, my mind was blown. I was like, wow, these, these girls are really learning a lot out there about, you know, caring for their skin, healthy habits, social media. And then, you know, certainly some boys are like that and they really are very compliant and do a great job. But a lot of them would come in, um, you know, and say they were there for an acne visit. They'd be in the hoodie, you know, hood up, head down, harder to talk to, to draw out and, um, you know, less interested or willing to comply with like a 10 step program for, for skincare. And so as I was noticing this, Um, one of my good friends in San Francisco, Darcy Rosenblum came to me, you know, four years ago with an idea for developing an easy, effective skincare plan for teens, but kind of aim it at boys because that was really the the missing piece and the the white space in in the market. There was really nothing aimed for, for self-care for boys. You are spot on. Like I'm thinking of my children. So my daughter, which is so strange to me because I have never been one for like self-care and she is in the bathroom and she's putting on every lotion and oils and just, you know, she's like, I have to practice my bedtime routine (laughs) beyond me. And then the boys, like you said, they just, they're not comfortable with it. And my daughter's younger, so she hasn't really gone through the whole skin irritation, acne, all of that stuff, but my boys did. And um, the information 
you know, honestly, it was it wasn't as much as it is for girls. And is it the same? I'm not even sure how you would work with boys compared to girls in the way of acne and things like that. Yeah, great, great question. So um, boys and girls skin is very largely the same with just a couple minor differences, you know, men's skin tends to be thicker and have more oil glands, interestingly. Um, and so they certainly, the males can struggle a little bit more on the severity spectrum with their acne. Another reason for that is that one of the components of acne are, is hormonally driven. So the male-based hormones, the androgens, the testosterone can make acne a lot worse. So this, oh. on the scale of severity, you know, 80 to 90% of everyone is going to get acne in their lifetime, but sometimes boys get it a little earlier and, and a little more severely than girls. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. I was wondering if maybe it had to do with the fact that they're more like shaving and things like that, but they probably weren't shaving. I'm just thinking because my older son, but he probably wasn't shaving by that point. Yeah. You know, shaving, <laughs> shaving's a whole other topic because there's like a host of different like skin irritation and conditions that you can get um, based on shaving practices from folliculitis or razor bumps, even to little scarring, you know, around the hair follicles. Um, there's, there's different things that, that can happen if we're not shaving in a, in an appropriate way or a very hygienic way. Okay. Um, my son, he, my middle son, he had mentioned at one point like charcoal wipes or charcoal things to help with that. How do you feel about all of that? Uh, unfortunately, charcoal is not one of the recommended active ingredients for treating acne. Really? Um, okay. and there's really not a ton of evidence that it's helpful at all. So let's let's back up a little bit about what you said um, okay. in terms of girls and boys. So with girls in the office, a lot of times I'm Pairing down the regimen. You know, there's too many things going on. And sometimes the girls want to even use like the products that their parents are using, which if they're, you know, gentle, hypoallergenic, fragrance free, that can be a good thing. But if mom's really got a lot of actives going on, like the vitamin C, the topical retinoids, all of that on a teens or tweens changing kind of more delicate, more sensitive skin can actually lead to problems like irritant dermatitis, contact dermatitis. Um, lots of, lots of issues. So a lot of times with the girls, I'm paring down and then with the boys, we're just trying to get them to wash their face. And you know what you have to ask, because with those boys coming in, you, you can say, you know, how often are you taking a shower? You know, just starting the conversation of like self-care for boys is a great opportunity for both moms and parents and for doctors, you know, sometimes they'll come in the office for a different reason, but you recognize there's a little acne and you can even open that conversation with saying, Hey, Brian, are you taking a shower every day? How often are you, you know, bathing or showering and what are you using? And you might be surprised to find that that teen is using whatever's in the shower, like whatever shampoo is in there, head to toe, Pantene all over. And, <laughs> and you won't know that unless you ask. So it's a great conversation starter and a wonderful opportunity for moms to be like, Hey, you know what? I didn't know you were using Pantene to wash your face. Let's go to Target. Let's go to Walmart. Let's go out and like, we'll together get you something that is gentle and effective. And this is a great time to learn the healthy habits of washing your face and taking care of your skin. And what age do you usually recommend children start washing their face? Like, I mean, are we talking even when they're little? No, not really little, like the tweens okay. and teens, I think 10 okay. to 12 is like a great time to start it. And even just having something in the shower and saying, Hey, you know what? That shampoo is really for your hair, but this could be used on your face and your body and is really safe and effective. So just make sure you rinse that down. And, you know, when you're in there at, at, at least, you know, once or twice a week for sure for 10 year olds and hopefully every day for, for the teens in your life. Okay. And then they're supposed to be, so if they're washing their face, do you recommend once a day? Like, I do. Once a yeah, day is, okay. is definitely a great place to start. And then the, if you're starting to see some concerns come up, like a little bit of oiliness, some blackheads, the early like blackheads and whiteheads in the T-zone, nose, forehead, you know, chin, you could say, you know what? 
there are studies that even show washing your face twice a day might help with your, with your complexion problems. So even getting them to do twice a day at that point. And then if you're starting to see even more or those like red bumps, inflammatory acne or pimples, pustules, that's when you want to say, Hey, maybe we need a little help with this because when the acne starts getting more inflammatory, or if the comedones, like the pores are getting really stretched, that's when you can have that little scarring start. And what we really want to make sure is that kids don't develop permanent scarring from their acne. Okay. And when you do like when they are washing their face, have you noticed or can it happen to where there's too much? Like maybe they've got to pull back. Is that usually, I'm not sure with boys, like with the sensitive skin, is that common where they might need to pull back a little bit with that? Or if you notice that, do you usually recommend different products that they use? I think you're right about frequency. You know, if you're washing your face three to five times a day, these athletes who are in sports, who really feel they need to do that, they can develop some irritation. And then of course the products that you're using matter too, because we can choose something that is really gentle, has a really gentle surfactant. The surfactant is the foaming agent in the soap or the cleanser. That's what makes it foam up and bubble. If it's really gentle, it shouldn't strip or dry the skin. And then you want to watch for active ingredients. If you've got a lot of acids, like there's a lot of different cleansers out there with the two for acne that are really common and very effective for, for that concern are the two ingredients are salicylic acid and benzyl peroxide. Both of those are proven to help with acne, um, to reduce bacteria on the skin, be a little anti-inflammatory, and those can be helpful. But of course, while they're helping, they can also be a little bit irritating or drying. So you do have to be careful with what's in the product, how frequently you're using it, and just stay attuned to how the skin is feeling. If it feels super tight, dry, and chapped, you know, apply a moisturizer, get that, you know, going into the routine. But if it's getting to the point of redness and true irritation, the skin barrier is showing signs of damage, you need to back off, stop, and and choose a different direction. With the acne, um, can you talk us through things that they can do, like once it starts to appear, because I'm sure you have seen children who tack it with their hands. They're trying to figure out, they want it gone. What is your recommendation with all of that? I mean, are we just trying to uh, keep our, like keep the area clean? What do you recommend? I've heard so many things. I mean, I remember as a child, we used to put toothpaste on it, you know, (laughs) That's a myth that's still out there, Courtney. Yes, but unfortunately, toothpaste doesn't work and the fluoride in it can even make things worse. So please don't put toothpaste on your acne. That one's been debunked. Okay, so what do you recommend? Obviously, you probably don't want children trying to get rid of it by popping it and all of that. Exactly. I think it really all starts with just that basic hygiene, that conversation of I'm seeing a little bit of acne. Let's start this great routine. Let's give you a gentle hypoallergenic fragrance-free cleanser to start washing your face once or twice a day. That's it. If that's not helping improve the situation with, you know, taking off the oil, dirt, debris, and you're still seeing acne, you may think, okay, well, perhaps it's time to choose a cleanser that has like an active ingredient for acne in it. And that would be one of those two I just talked about, the salicylic acid, the benzyl peroxide, or in the case of the line that I created and formulated several years ago, our our hero ingredient, as we call it, that we use is sodium hypochlorite, which is antimicrobial microbial, anti-inflammatory, and pretty gentle. But one of those three things can help at least the basics with acne. In terms of picking and popping, that's that's definitely a pitfall. You, you want to keep hands off. And one of the greatest things in the last like several years that I've seen for this are those little hydrocolloid patches. I think those pimple patches are a great idea because yeah. they provide a nice moist environment for wound healing and they keep hands off. So that's a great win um, for teens with acne. And I think it's also getting normalized. You know, social media trends and things about these pimple patches have really normalized using it. And I see kids come in and they're not embarrassed at all, nor should they be, but it's great that that culture is out there saying, Hey, you know what? Acne is normal. 
90% of everyone is going to get it. It's okay to wear a pimple patch. Let's not try to, you know, pick and, and pull at the skin because you end up with more risk for scarring when you do that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that they've got the different, like the stars and the different things, the different colors and everything. Although I feel, and maybe I'm wrong because my boys are older, but I feel it's geared a lot towards girls again, a lot of the little patches that they use. Yeah. You know, I think girls might be more likely to pick it up and try it for the first time. Yeah. Um, some of the brands are doing a great job with that gender neutral packaging though, which I think is great because, yeah. you know, you only need to walk down the aisle at Target or Walmart and see all of the fruity pink scented things that are really geared towards girls and that aren't that great for girl skin either. Um, and notice that, that there's really not that much geared towards like a teen with like an active lifestyle or boys, you know, for that matter. Right. Okay. Speaking of that, how do you explain to girls that do get caught up in that, all the smelly fragrant stuff? Um, how would you recommend we speak to our children about that? Like pulling back from that, because that's another thing that they love to get into. They love it. And, you know, I think, what I have found is that sometimes it's actually really important to get the mom on your side and have the moms and dads that are caring for them and providing them with the products understand why as a pediatric dermatologist, you're not recommending highly scented, fragranced, irritating products for skin. Um, you know, teens and tweens, their skin isn't quite mature yet. It's still kind of undergoing those changes through puberty. And so if we start to use a lot of highly irritating substances, botanical ingredients, you know, a lot of different actives, we are going to actually strip and damage the skin barrier that can, you know, make acne worse, but it can also cause a whole host of problems like eczema and irritant dermatitis and flare up other conditions. So having the parents on your side about that is really important. And then educating the, the, the teen, you know, you don't have to, you know, step on to the latest TikTok trend. Your skin is super healthy. You don't need all these actives, but you do need to find something that you like, that's gentle, that will work for you. And, you know, between the three of you or your, your family, you can work that out. You can go to target, you can make that, that run, which is also a nice, I think, bonding experience for parents too. But staying away from things that can be irritating is important. And it's even gotten to the point of being a huger issue, like a big umbrella issue as marketing and all of these trends are tending towards the natural, like natural products, green products, all of, all of this, um, which can also be another potential area of problem because natural is not always better for skin. You know, all these really intense botanical extracts can lead to irritant or even allergic contact dermatitis. And what people may not realize about developing an allergy to an actual product is that that is a lifelong allergy. It doesn't go away. You have to avoid that substance for the rest of your life. And I think that there's some nice data coming out that shows clearly, especially even in younger children, that allergies to botanical ingredients like lavender, linalol, the, there's these two ingredients that are related to lavender extract is really on the rise. And that hmm. shouldn't surprise us seeing as like every baby thing has lavender um, in it, right? Yep. Um, but it's a lifelong allergy. A contact dermatitis means you have sensitized your immune system against that chemical compound and that repeated application is going to make you react again and again. So you will have to avoid that compound for the rest of your life. Mm. I like to phrase it like poison ivy, right? What is more natural than a plant like poison ivy, but yet, you know, many people are allergic and when they do get repeated exposures, the, the allergy and the effect is, is even much worse and can be very, very severe, itchy, irritated. So we have to have a healthy respect for natural ingredients intense botanical extracts. And especially for those with sensitive skin prone to eczema or acne, I recommend steering clear of that altogether. Yeah. I noticed um, for myself, I deal with that. I have a contact dermatitis to plants. I don't know. It actually started, I think it started with mangoes. Um, and then now I cannot touch any plants. It's very strange. I get this like 
it's it's welting that occurs. Yeah. With yeah. So mango is actually a pretty common allergen and right. you would be surprised at how many products have mango extract in them. And I'm going to tell you something that's going to maybe surprise you, but in the pit of the mango, um, and in the skin, there is a compound called urushiol and urushiol is the exact same allergen as in poison Ivy. So mango and poison Ivy kind of cross react and many botanicals cross react. So I'm not surprised to hear that you have this kind of plant-based um, allergy and, and contact dermatitis. And it just really surprises me that more companies that are producing topical, ther- topical creams and things that people are putting on their skin have things like mango extract in them. It's certainly not something a dermatologist would recommend that you spread all over your skin. No, 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 definitely not. Um, going back to the acne with Kids that are boys or girls that are in sports and start to deal with like the back acne, do you recommend different for that or do you handle it very similarly? It's actually pretty similar um, because when you have back acne, again, it can be really red and angry and inflamed. And so a lot of times those children will really benefit from an antimicrobial anti-inflammatory body wash. So having those same ingredients, like the, especially benzyl peroxide is a great one in that environment, but the sodium hypochlorite is too. And then including that cleanser in the shower where they can wash head to toe, that is a great idea. And then one thing that is really nice for teens on the go would be throw in a, a wipe. You know, the, the wipes that I formulated have a little bit of sodium hypochlorite in them. So they're really nice for cleansing and reducing bacteria on the go, you know, throw it in the gym bag, use it right after sports, you know, even then just what, after you wipe your face, wipe down your helmet, you know, or, or what a, other equipment. And I think that's nice and fits really well into a teen's active lifestyle. So go with a wipe. Um, there's also a really great spray that's more available in the last three years. It's called hypochlorous acid. Have you heard of that one? It's like a, a spray and it's like marketed under SOS spray, but it's really widely available. And it too is antimicrobial and a great thing to spray on your back, in your, you know, on your armpits, even like just to reduce bacteria, help with body odor. And even, you know, that in a way is also helping with people prone to acne or eczema where you have bacteria playing a role in flaring of both of those conditions. Okay. And since you mentioned eczema as well, for those people that are dealing with eczema, what do you recommend that they can use to help um, with the itching and just trying to calm everything down? Is it the same as like what you use with acne or do you then take a different route? Well, you take a little bit of a different route, I would say. So you know, with eczema, you really do need to soothe the skin barrier because the primary problem with, with people and children prone to eczema or atopic dermatitis is that their skin isn't able to retain the water the way that people who don't have eczema skin can retain the water. And that's due to a little defect in the skin barrier. There's a little protein that's either missing or deficient. And because of that, you lose a lot of water through the surface of the skin. So for, for children, especially, and even teens with eczema, I really like to talk about the soak and smear mantra. So when you have eczema, we've got to put water back into the skin. And how do we do that? Well, soaking is a great way in just plain warm water. We soak the skin, And then we try to keep the water in the skin by putting on a nice, thick, occlusive moisturizer. So the soaking itself is really helpful. And then a good occlusive moisturizer on top. When again, that's fragrance-free, hypoallergenic. In babies and and toddlers, I really love just plain white Vaseline, plain petrolatum. But, you know, as they mature, um, there's other white, you know, creams and things that can do the trick too. Vanna cream, CeraVe, Cetaphil, there's a lot of great brands out there doing um, a nice job with these types of hypoallergenic moisturizers. Okay. And then do you recommend that like as kids get older, do you recommend lotions and things like that for beyond the skincare that you're recommending? Is there like, should they be putting a lot of lotions on their face? Um, I, I mean, 
obviously for teens that come into my office, I'll say, you know, here's three, three potential things that are, that are the basics that you can do. Number one, wash your face twice a day. Keep it gentle, hypoallergenic. Right. Number two, wear a sunscreen. This is a great opportunity to have that conversation about healthy skin habits and wearing a, a sunscreen, SPF 30 or greater every morning and definitely reapplying you know, throughout the day in the summertime or when the UV index is really high. And then thirdly, if your skin is dry, maybe a moisturizer is something that you need to kind of have on hand. So those three things I think are the basics for like a teen skincare regimen, just like a cleanser, a sunscreen, a moisturizer. That's really the basics. And hopefully most teens can comply with that. Some can't, but if, at least if it's on hand, they've got it there ready if they need it. And even if they're not applying it every day. Okay, perfect. I think that's very simple for kids to be able to handle, parents can help provide them that information. Is there anything that you would recommend um, to make it more comfortable to start this conversation with our children? I know you mentioned at the very beginning, um, just asking them what they're using in the shower. But if there's some of these children that are real hesitant to talk about things, is there a way to just discuss self-care on a whole with them. Is there anything that you recommend on how to go about that? <laughs> that That's a great question. So I kind of told you my secrets for in the office, kind of opening up the conversation, at, you know, discussing it. But I think you've kind of hit like a larger topic here, Courtney. And that is that this is like the selfie generation. Things are online. Faces are online. And there's been a, a little bit of a difference that I've perceived between the way boys and girls are handling this. Mm -hmm. the, the girls are kind of, you know, conditioned and taught, you know, you should, you know, you need to care about your, ex, your ex appearance and here's what we need to do. And as we've talked about throughout the podcast, you know, they're a little more likely to engage in that. But I think that boys sometimes are conditioned to feel like they shouldn't care that they, that they, it's not masculine to care. And one of the big things I think that we need to do as healthcare providers and parents is try to start, remove that stigma about self-care for teens in general, and especially for boys. And so starting the conversation with, Hey, you know, here's what happened to me when I had acne, you know, kind of trying to normalize it. Acne is normal. Your, you know, body odor is normal. All the things that you're experiencing are normal. Here's how I dealt with it. Let's talk about it from a personal level. You know, let, let's say, you know, on it's okay to care about it. It's totally fine if it's getting you down, but we can together make a plan to, to have it better. It's within our power to, to do that. And so I, I like to talk a bit about it in terms of stigma. Let's remove the stigma. Let's normalize it so that our teens are not afraid to talk about it or not as hesitant as I think that they have been, like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I do think, like you mentioned, social media is helping because it just, it's normalizing all of this for everyone. Is there a point in time where we need to go see a dermatologist if we're dealing with certain issues on the skin? When should we then take it out of our own hands and move into a dermatology office? Oh, great question. Um, yes, there's definitely a time where you might need a medical intervention. You know, after all, acne, when it's, you know, on the more moderate to severe spectrum is certainly an inflammatory skin disease disorder. So we do need, you know, help at those times. Um, I think if you're seeing more than 10 really large inflamed papules and pustules, or if you're seeing any large areas where the pores look like they're getting little pits in them or scarring, if you see that, then it's time to get help. And that could even be just taking them into their local family doctor or pediatrician. You know, they're trained, you know, in basic skincare and acne. And so they might have something that they can do just in that primary care office. And then as if things progress and it's more severe or scarring, the primary care physician may say, you know what, this is a little now out of my wheelhouse. Let's have you go refer to dermatology. Okay. And so there's, it can be a two-step process, or if you're lucky to be in a 
an urban city with a lot of access to dermatology care and can just make your own appointment, then that's great, obviously. But there are parts of the country where access is very, very difficult to dermatology and especially pediatric dermatology. We're a really small subspecialty. Um, we're growing, but we are small. Um, so sometimes access is a little bit difficult. Okay. Okay. And then, and you sort of answered this, is there a certain time where they like age where they need to see pediatric dermatology? I guess it just depends on if there's anything local to them, if you may not have people that specialize in that. Right. Right. If you have access, yeah. it's always great to see a pediatric dermatologist, <laughs> but I'll tell you the one time there, there are different ages where acne is not normal. So acne will start to show up, you know, around age eight or nine sometimes, you know, with that first surge of, of hormones, that's called adrenarchy. When you're starting to see that first body hair come up and you might see a few blackheads in the ears or on the forehead. And so around nine, that's, you know, pretty typical and normal to see. But if you have a five or six year old showing that they've got actual acne with blackheads and pimples coming up, mid childhood acne is not normal and can be a sign of precocious puberty or early onset puberty. And that might be a time where you do need some expert help or even, you know, taking, taking the child to your local primary care or a pediatric dermatologist, if you had one, or even an, a pediatric endocrinologist, because mid childhood acne is not, is not normal and needs to be evaluated and worked up. Oh, perfect. That's good to know. All right. Well, can you tell us where we can find you? And then um, if you have anything that you want to let us know, like something that we can apply today um, for our children. Oh boy. That's a, that's a tough one, Courtney. But so, um, you know, you can find me. So the past few years after the pandemic and after really digging in deep um, over over a decade in terms of trying to educate people with respect to pediatric dermatology. I started volunteering with my national society, creating great you know, handouts and information for, for patients and even primary care doctors. Cause of course, you know, access is, is sometimes hard. So educating our first line providers is so important. Um, and then I worked my way up and joined in the American Academy of Pediatrics. And we did lots of great work with them and their content on healthychildren.org. But during the pandemic, I watched in um, kind of amazement as more and more people were online taking to social media. And a lot of it um, was education themed and doctors became, you know, present on social media, educating people. And some of those were dermatologists who I thought were doing a really great job educating in that space. And I kind of changed my, my, um, pathway a little bit because I started to see, you know what, there could be room for education on social media with respect to pediatric dermatology. And I, I started to post, you know, a little bit, so you can find me, um, on social media. Um, I'm Dr. Sheila on TikTok and Dr. Sheila M on Instagram. And I really try to create things that, that would be helpful to parents. Um, okay. So that those are the kind of education-based things that I like to do on social media. I want parents to feel like they have a trusted source, you know, to talk about different things that affect children, whether it's eczema, acne, you know, different things that affect children's skin or what products to buy. Um, I like to give um, some educated advice about it. Okay. And then in turn, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was actually going to ask you, is there anything that you've seen out there that you would say that maybe they shouldn't follow the advice of not meaning doctors, but some of that common information that gets thrown out there on social media? Oh my goodness. We could have an entire podcast talk oh, about okay. that one topic, Courtney. There's so, and, and that's a prime reason why I, I decided to join in the conversation and meet patients where they are, because there is so much spread of medical misinformation on social media, you know, okay. even about supplements, like what supplements you can take internally that would help your skin. Well, guess what? most of them don't work at all. And it's a completely unregulated environment. So anyone can make any kind of claim and the FDA is not monitoring that. That's an area that I think needs to change and where we do need a lot more of that input and regulation um, that, that to help prevent 
those kind of claims from being made without any medical or evidence-based, you know, information or data. Okay. And then what is one thing that we can do this week to help support our children in their skincare routine or self-care routine? Make it fun, make it easy, make it accessible. Have that first conversation. Go and grab, you know, something at Target that they are going to um, actually use, you know, and 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 check in with, with your kids. You know, check in and see, are, are you able to do this? How, how is it going? You know, what can we do together to, to try to make this a, um, a long-term healthy habit for you? And I often tell some of the teens in my clinic, nothing looks better in your 40s and 50s than sunscreen in your teens and 20s. So <laughs> that's another uh, piece of advice that I like to give. That healthy sun protection stuff is, is a really great thing to work into. So um, it's the time when those, you know, when the self image is really forming, when those healthy habits are being laid down and it's just a fun, exciting time to be involved as, you know, both, you know, a mom in the family and as a doctor who gets the chance to care for, for teens and tweens. Perfect. And then I do want to make sure that you let people know about Strike Club and is there any specific um, product that you would recommend people start with? Well, we're so proud of Strike Club. You know, we it's four moms, all female founded. And, it, you know, we really did see the need for a teen based and kind of marketed towards boys, effective, simple, locker room worthy products that they will actually use. And, you know, I said at the beginning of the podcast, it all starts with washing your face. So of course, I'm a really huge fan of our face first face wash. It's really, really gentle, but yet it fights bacteria, helps reduce inflammation. And I think it's great for kids who are prone to acne. So that's a, a wonderful place to start. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day for this conversation. Well, thanks for having me. I hope that um, your listeners will resonate with some of the things that we talked about and, and hopefully find um, a little bit of humor in it too. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found something to take away to help you practice healthier habits, move more, or handle the midlife and aging with grace. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend or leave us a review to help us reach more moms just like you. Head to movingthroughmidlife.com to join the free community or learn how you can move more and feel better in your daily life.